Welcome. Uh, welcome everyone to the first webinar of a series to prepare your plans for Rare Disease Day 2021. I'm going to share my screen. Great, thank you. And so today we'll be focusing on digital communications. So this webinar is really a learning from each other opportunity, not to miss whether you this be your first or your 10th year to prepare communications for this awareness campaign and people living with a rare disease. Today, you'll hear some tips and hopefully some of the examples will spark new ideas for you in your region. I'm Lara Chapel. Many of you know me. This is going to be, I realized yesterday, my 10th edition of Rare Disease Day at Eurodice. So as we coordinate the global campaign, the team at Eurodice and I are honored to host these webinars. There are over a hundred of you online today from six continents. So here, we're here uh, with the team in Paris. Um, so a good afternoon for my fellow Europeans and um, also those connecting um, from Africa. To the Australians, we're especially lucky to have you online. We'll keep you up so you can answer and ask all your questions at the end. And for those hooking in from Asia, good evening. And don't forget your coffee for the North and South Americans. Um, good morning to you. So we're gonna be together for two hours. Sit back, have those fingers ready to type in your questions. And we're here to share and learn from each other. Before we get started, let's meet from um, Eric. Hi, Eric, new member Hello. of the team. He's gonna give us some technical tips that you'll need to take action and yes. ask questions. So thank you, Lara. And my name is Eric, and I'm the person behind Where This Is Day social media. And it's my very first Where This Is Day, so I'm quite excited, I have to say. I can see that we have now some people still joining from all around the world. I can see registered people from Argentina, from Malaysia, from Kenya, from Indonesia, Italy, India, the UK, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for joining. And I can also see members of our national alliances who are the organization that make the Red Disease Day happen. So a big thank you to all of them as well. And I would like to share some useful information with you related to this webinar. So today we will have different ways of interacting with each other. The first one will be the chat where you can introduce yourselves, present your organization, share interesting examples for other people. So please note that it, this is the way of interacting with other participants. If you have a look at the chat, you can see that I have just posted the message. So feel free to do the same, feel free to, to use it as a networking tool. Uh, if you want to share this webinar on social media, you can use also the hashtag where this is day. So we will be monitoring, we will be retweeting, liking, we will be following all you say there. And if you want to interact with the panelists and ask them questions, you should use the question and answer feature Q and A uh, and our panelists will be able to, to answer to you at the end of all the presentations. So remember, important, if you want to network with all the participants, the chat, if you want to ask questions to the panelists, the question and answer feature. And if you encounter any technical issue, please contact us by sending a message to all panelists. So we will check that and we will come back to you as soon as possible. And uh, today we will... Can we go maybe to the next slide, please? Yes, sure. So um, should I take this, Eric? Yes, please. Yes, so just to, back to the basics, just to remind you that Rare Disease Day falls on a Sunday this year. So the 28th of February, 2021. Eurodice and Rare Diseases Europe, along with 18 national alliances, National Alliance patient organizations created Rare Disease Day back in 2008. So Eurodies continues to have the role of coordinating um, the global patient community. And uh, with the national alliances, we work all year round to produce those marketing materials, um, but also to prepare the messaging, uh, 
um, and um, the website and all the information that uh, you receive so that you can adapt those materials and use them locally. Just a reminder that in the coming days and weeks on rarediseaseday.org, you'll be able to find um, all of those uh, materials. I also wanna give a special thank you to those Rare Disease Day partners. It started with 18 and now um, for the 14th edition in 2021, we have over 60 uh, patient organizations that are national alliances around the world co-creating the messaging, the cause, and those marketing materials. Back to you, Eric. So uh, just a brief reminder, please uh, use, when, when you want to contact with all the people participating here, don't forget to use the all panelists and all attendees uh, uh, attendees uh, feature on the chat. Not, not just all panelists. All panelists will be only if you encounter technical problems. Um, anyways, uh, I'm really excited to present to you this webinar. And today we will learn how to design a hopefully successful digital communication strategy which will be really important this year under the circumstances that we are that we are living. So today we will have four different guests and I'm going to introduce the first one. So we are going to go to to the to see all their faces now. And I want first to introduce Matt Craig, who is a consultant specialized in digital strategy with more than 18 years of experience in the health sector. He enjoys working on challenging subjects, creating successful teams, delivering change, and building relationships. Hi, Matt. Can you have? Can you wave your hand and say hello? Hi, Eric. Eric, thanks for that. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for saying I have 18 years experience. I always try not to talk about that, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay and then, yep. Go ahead. Okay, and so next uh, coming up in the core of our, of our webinar, we'll hear three case studies. Um, first up, we'll hear from Bianca. Bianca, can you say hi? So Hello. Bianca is from the German National Alliance uh, from the organization AXA. Um, it's a large alliance. They have over a hundred members now. And we've been lucky to have Bianca for um, four or five years now participating in shaping the international campaign with the coordinating group. She's always challenging and bringing us back to the essential parts and the patient needs. So thanks, Bianca, for sharing your experience today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. And next up, we'll hear from um, David from Mexico. David. So thank you, David. So we um, learned today, David, I say David, but he's known uh, globally as Toto. So um, he is actually one of the most amazing recovery cases studies from Latin America as declared by the WHO, the World Health Organization. He's living with Gocher disease. So um, thank you, David, for also sharing your social media experience for us today in uh, thank our you webinar. Guys. Thank you guys. For Rare Disease Day. And finally, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hey. And so Christine um, is from Kenya and she'll speak to us. I remember um, Christine um, was one of the first contacts from Africa to reach out to Rare Disease Day. I still remember the first email, Christine, that when you sent um, and like many of the volunteers and representatives from our patient organization partners, um, Christine is directly affected um, with two of her children um, living with a rare disease to different uh, rare diseases. So she, as a mom, uh, decided to um, hold an event, and her first event was in a local hospital. Uh, we sent her some Rare Disease Day posters, which she hung up, and she shared information with um, other families and caregivers. So she's six years later now, and she's going to talk to us about um, her communications plans um, and what she's doing in digital communications. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. And leave to Eric to do some, find out who's listening to us today, a little bit more about you. Eric, 
here. Sorry, on the same no worries. always with Zoom. So <laughs> no now worries. that you know almost everything about us, uh, we also want to know about you. So we have prepared a poll that will pop up on your screen in a couple of seconds with the following questions. What would you like to learn during this webinar? Which social media channels does your organization use? And uh, is this your first Rare Disease Day? So please, I, I can see that some of you are already answering the questions. Gonna give you some more time. Oh, we have floor people now answering. That's great. Perfect. Oh, interesting results. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> so we are waiting for the half of you voting. Yes, so I will give you a couple of seconds more. Well, everyone is so excited. Everyone is voting. So yeah, that's perfect. I think we can already share the, the results. So most of you would like to know how to reach a wider audience, which makes totally sense. And also how to plan my communication for where this is day, which we will walk, uh, we will talk about it today. And of course, Facebook is the most used social media followed by Twitter and Instagram. And I'm surprised by the 4% of people using TikTok because this is actually yeah, the future maybe of communication. I don't know if we can say this at this moment, but, but it's a very interesting social media. Matt doesn't agree. <laughs> so <laughs> um, for most of you, this is your first rare disease day, which is also very exciting. Some of you have already, have already participated on rare disease day. So welcome to everybody. And uh, just so you know, we have all the webinars uh, that we have prepared for this year. So the following one will be the lighting up or the illumination of buildings for Red Disease Day, because last year we illuminated some, uh, some landmarks around the, the globe. So we had the Colosseum in Rome. We have uh, a lot of buildings in Australia. We have the Empire State Building in the USA. Uh, we have also some some football stadiums like San Mames in Bilbao. So we will. Is, yes. I may sorry, Eric, just to uh, point out again. This is thanks to all of you, in fact, that those buildings were lit up, um, working locally. So that's what we're going to um, hear from some of those people um, who um, worked locally to get those buildings lit up. So it's it's um, it's from the community. Yes, so we will have people from the national alliances in Australia and Italy. Yes. And, uh, and I will share the link with you in a couple of minutes. Uh, in early December, we have another webinar uh, on how to effectively approach media. And just before well, this is day, we will have this webinar uh, on how to prepare your social media channels for Red Disease Day. So see you the 19th of November. I will send you the link. And uh, remember that you can comment on our social media and you can use our hashtag and you can tag us. So feel free to, to share your pictures and everything related to this webinar. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Matt. I'm going to get Matt's... Uh... Matt slides up. Okay, thanks, um, Laura. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's uh, great to meet you all virtually, and great that you've all been able to attend this session. I think we are just arriving with slides in a moment. It's great that we've had um, comments in the poll around how to re how to reach a wider audience. So we'll be covering that. Um, shortly. Um, but yeah, so the session is going to cover digital communications for Rare Disease Day, um, hopefully self-explanatory. I think if we go into the next slide, Laura, so but we've got four or five different things that we're going to cover. So we'll give a, a brief int introduction um, about what we're going to cover. Um, why are we using digital communications? So we'll talk about Rare Disease Day. 
and also why digital communication is beneficial to um, the campaign and all of the organizations we're working with and the patients too. Um, we'll talk about choosing our approach so the different tools and strategies you can take. Then we'll talk about planning. So the planning is the messaging and the kind of audiences uh, we need to identify. So really being specific with how we approach our communications. And then we'll talk finally around um, different approaches to different kinds of content and materials and then making the most of social media. So um, those, of you, those of you who have used communications tools before will know that trying to cram in an explanation as, as to the whole of digital communications and digital marketing in the space of, what, if, of one webinar is a lot to do. Um, <laughs> you could probably talk about it for the next year or so. So we'll, we'll see what we can do in the next couple of hours. Um, what I want to do, what I want to get across is this is a, a conversation with you about digital communication and how we can use a variety of tools to make our communications a success. Um, what I also want to do is explain to you um, what tools you can use um, and mobilize you to use those tools. I know some people are a little bit afraid of using digital communication tools, but we really want to get you on board and get you thinking about how you can use them and not just thinking about it, actually doing something with them. Um, then we want to find out what we're trying to get. We'll talk a little bit about the Rare Disease Day campaign and how we're going to be using stories and creating connections. Um, and then we want to make change for the rare disease community. So that's all coming together. So, and then we'll have our case studies. So our fantastic case studies from Kenya, Mexico, and Germany, who will explain, you know, rather than me talking about the theory of it, we'll explain how it all works in practice. Okay, so through to the next slide. So why are we using digital communication? Well, we say there it's fast, efficient, convenient, and it's measurable. And actually, um, that's all true. Um, it's vitally important that we use the resources available to us um, effectively. So the stacks and st stacks of digital communication tools available to all of us, but it's making sure that we actually choose the right ones and that we're clear on what we're actually trying to achieve. Um, you know, for if you've got five followers on Facebook or on Twitter, uh, it's going to be a big challenge to have a global impact. But one of the things we'll look at is how we connect you with other organizations and how you can use different um, tools and different tricks to make it work more effectively. Okay, next slide. So one of the things that it's um, often we forget um, that it's not just that around choosing a communications tool. We're trying, we're trying to achieve something for rare disease patients. And actually, one of the things that we'll do throughout the Rare Disease Day campaign and the build up to Rare Disease Day is that uh, we're gonna be using patient stories and real life quotes and real life information from what it's actually like for patients. Um, and here's a quote here. So this is from Francesca um, Cappuccini. Uh, so forgive me the Italian speakers amongst us if I've got that. Uh, pronunciation horrifically wrong. Uh, but Francesca has said, please don't believe who told you you're not a superhero. You can't do it, it's too late. Uh, you can do it, uh, do activities for your health, surround yourself with people who value you and help you to be reborn over and over again. So very much we're looking at building community across the campaign and telling stories. And we'll come on to that about how social media and digital communications can uh, help you tell stories, okay. Next slide, please, Laura. So this is all about our approach. And um, I'll just slow down a little bit because I'm just looking at the closed captions and the closed captions tends not to be able to follow my English or my Liverpool accent, so uh, I'll slow down. So our approach for Rare Disease Day, just to give you some context as to what the campaign, the global campaign will be doing is, and we'll again come on to this in a moment. The campaign is characterized by the following. Um, we have a clear audience and just make a mental note as we go this. We have a clear audience, which is the existing rare disease community. Uh, and that's, I think, you know, we're talking 300 million people, maybe more, maybe less around the globe. It's quite a big audience. Uh, we'll be breaking that down further as we go through the campaign. 
we'll be using targeted, passionate and creative communications collateral, um, materials, social media posts that bring the community together as one. Um, so it's this idea of um, the community has a much more powerful voice than the individual. Uh, we'll be recognizing and celebrating our World Wild Rare Disease community, uh, connecting their stories and demanding social opportunity for all. Um, so again, this is around our key messages and the audiences and the actions we're going to take. And then we'll be using digital tools um, that can be adapted, localized and enhanced by you, by the people we work with um, to support the campaign. So we'll be giving you a set of tools, toolkits, materials, graphics that you can work with and that uh, you can use those on your own social media and, and your websites. And then we'll be monitoring uh, the impact of our communications and looking that, at that regularly to make sure we can improve what we're doing. Because uh, there's no point just developing communications, firing them out on social media, and then, you know, if they don't hit, if they don't uh, meet people's expectations, we have to go back and amend them. So we have to keep learning. Okay, next slide, please. So choosing our approach. So there are lots and lots of different ways to communicate. And even though this is about digital communications, one of the things I wanted to make sure you, you get the message out is that actually there are multiple ways of communication. And digital is one part of pretty much all of these. So we've got um, digital communications channels and um, will be the sponsorship activity there is planning that goes into your approach there are partnership work and um, there's looking at your identity and your branding and your logos there are the kind of events that you're hosting and events this year will be very very different from previously because a lot of places around the world are not going to be able to host face-to-face -face events traditional events so we'll have to look at how we can use digital events webinars zoom chats this kind of thing and public relations, community building we've touched on, um, and digital communications channels. So for your audience, um, they have quite a few digital channels available to them. So we've got Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, TikTok is being used by Eric as well. And um, we're using all of those to mobilize the community. And, um, You'll see if you look at the Eurodis channels and the Rare Disease Day um, Twitter account that, that we're already starting to build up a, a bit of momentum ahead of the official, official launch day, which is 100 days before Rare Disease Day. So Rare Disease Day is on the 28th of February. I'm not going to guess at what the date is 100 days before, but maybe somebody can put that in the chat function. Um, but again, just Digital isn't the only way to communicate, so you need to choose the tools that are most effective to help you do the, the job properly. Um, again, we can't go into too much detail on this because we don't have much, much time to get through this. Okay, so we'll skip through to the next slide. This is a list of different tools versus different channels. Okay, and there's loads and loads of different ways to do this. Some are more suitable than others, and really that's down to you. Um, as an individual organization to look at who your audience is, so to understand who they are, and the best way to communicate with them. Um, you can see on the left hand side, there are different um, tools. Um, so we talk about website, video and webinars, conference calls, project management, newsletters, polling that we're using here, um, toolkits that we'll be using as part of the campaign and uh, CRM, which is customer relationship management databases. And then on the other side, we've got different channels. So these are different ways of getting your messages out to people. And again, uh, a long list of YouTube, LinkedIn, Canva. Um, some of these you may know, some of them you may not. Um, Instagram, Monday, House Party, MailChimp, SurveyMonkey. So there's lots and lots of different ways of doing it. Um, one of the things that we'll do after this webinar is that we will give you, I think, a link or a set of links with some of the really useful tools that we'll be using, uh, just so that you can familiarize yourselves with them. Um, we're big fans of Canva and uh, some of the other scheduling. Canva is a, um, 
an online design tool, which is really fantastic for social media graphics. Um, okay, we'll skip on to the next slide, please, Laura. Okay, and this is the, the meaty stuff. So planning digital communications. So why do we plan? Um, we have a, oh, the image has disappeared from my screen. Um, we have a digital communications plan uh, to help identify who we need to reach. Um, you know, that is who our audience is, what we want to tell them, um, our key messages, what we want them to know and what we want them to do. So there are our objectives as well. So identify who we need to reach, tell them what we want them to know and um, identify them and talk to them. So this includes identifying our audiences and key messages and the tools that we use to communicate with each audience. So within the plan framework, um, we have our objectives, our approach, so our strategy that we're going to use, so how we're going to get in touch with people, the tools that we use uh, that we just saw on the previous slide, and then the timetable, the, the actual activity that we're going to um, contact them with. Um, next slide we'll come on to is, again, a, a patient quote. So, these are the kind of things that patients are dealing with on a regular basis. And I think it's useful to bear this in mind. Um, this particular patient is, uh, well, it's, it's a mother talking about her son. So it's Nicoletta uh, in the United States talking about her son, Christoph. Um, and Nicoletta is saying, we would like to get in touch with the other three families that are dealing with Fars syndrome. Uh, so we learn together more about this disease to share experience and eventually to find a cure for this disease with the help of scientists. Okay, we don't know what the future looks like living with a rare disease, and this is so scary. So Nicoletta is talking here about um, more wanting to make connections with other families around the world. So she knows that there are three other families, um, but she's looking for that link to be made. And actually, what can we do with our communities, with our communications activities to help bring those people together? Um, part of that is telling these kinds of stories. Um, part of that is sharing the experiences. And part of that is the work that we're doing to contact officials and healthcare professionals. And we'll, we'll touch on that with um, what the case studies as well. We'll talk about how we can use uh, digital communications to make contact with these public affairs officials and healthcare professionals. Okay, next slide. So defining your audience. Um, as we mentioned, the global campaign is focusing on the rare disease community. Um, your organization, the smaller that you can target your audience, the better really. For the global campaign, we're talking 300 million people. It's quite a big audience. <laughs> so one of the things that we'll do is we'll try and break that down. And it may be that for your organization, um, it could be somebody in government, it could be young people with rare disease, it could be internal colleagues that you're focusing on um, that you can use digital communication to contact. Uh, it could be your partners, it could be industry. So it could be uh, biopharma, for example. It could be healthcare practitioners sponsors and funders. And then at the end, we've got the public. Public for me is too big an audience. Um, if you remember about tailoring your message, um, how can you tailor your message for everybody? Uh, it becomes quite difficult. So uh, think about your audience. So, okay, and then we'll just go on further. So if you just skip through this slide. Um, so, Choosing your audience, we've already mentioned earlier around actually being targeted and specific. So we're talking about the rare disease community, but be clear to yourselves as you're developing your, your messaging and your plan, what you are trying to say. Um, so if you identify that your audience is healthcare practitioners, you can probably have two or three things that you're trying to say to them. What are you asking them to do? When are you saying it? So that's about the timing. So as you pull together a plan, you pull together a timetable. What outcomes you are looking for? So the measures, um, the controls, and how you will say it. And the, the tone is really important. And uh, it's not something that we'll go through now, but some, you know, choosing your tone 
can have a big impact on your communication. So tone, meaning, um, um, do you say it in a, um, in a friendly way, in a supportive way, in a more aggressive way? And um, there are roles for each of those different styles, um, but you have to really think about who your audience is and what you're trying to achieve with your communications. Okay, next slide. Okay, so developing content and social media activity. So one of the things that we want to do is, uh, and we mentioned earlier on is, um, Red Disease Day is our key activity, it's key campaign, um, but it's not just about Red Disease Day. The, so the communications that the global campaign will be doing, will be talking about beyond the Red Disease Day. So not when it comes to the 1st of March, um, people will still have a rare disease. So it doesn't just end at the at midnight on the 28th of February. So we want to develop these stories and then we can have assets that we can use beyond the rare disease day. Um, we talk about assets and blogs. Um, we talk about different social media graphics that we can develop, videos and images and toolkits. And we'll hear from um, Carlos and Bianca, sorry, David and uh, Bianca in a moment about how they've used visuals um, in their campaigns. And then social media is key. Um, how do you work with your partners? So can you contact your partners and get them on board? Um, can you direct message them to tell you, tell them what they're, what you're expecting to do in the next few days on social media? Um, can they work with you to plan and can you plan your own activity? Um, well, not even can you, you should be planning your activity. Um, so think about a longer term activity rather than just posting one tweet. Think about what you need to do over a month and what your audience is and what your objective is with your communications. And then use tagging and hashtags um, to make sure that your influencers and that your partners are included. So tagging um, allows you to, we spoke earlier about having, if you've got a very small Twitter following, Actually, you can use tagging with uh, sponsors, partners, and influencers to really grow the amount of people that are viewing your content. Okay. So we'll just skip through. It's coming, it's coming. Okay, I'm just having an issue with my slides. Just give me a moment. It's okay, Matt. Thank you to everybody who are now uh, sharing their experiences on social media. Remember that you can use our Rare Disease Day hashtag. Have seen all, already some posts on Twitter and on Instagram. So feel free to, to comment to use this hashtag and to, to send us your pictures as well. Have seen so far that we have people from almost all around the world. So thank you very much for, for joining. And we have also different, different people taking part here. We have people from research centers. We have people from, we have uh, patient advocates. We have uh, carers. So we have a wide range of people. And uh, welcome everybody. And yes, I'm gonna check again the social media and see if I inspired you to, to tweet or to share something on Instagram. And hopefully Matt will get soon the presentation again. Is that right, Matt? Yes, apologies, Matt. Is this? Yeah, I'm just coming back now. So I'm just waiting for something to load up here because I've lost some of the, uh, the data from the slides. So just give me a moment. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can also use the chat or you can already start asking questions. We are gonna answer to them in the end of the webinar. So uh, feel free to use the question and answer tool 
and feel free to use the chat, social media, whatever you, you, you want to use, but it's important for us that you give us some feedback as well. So feel free to, to do so. I'm sure that people are taking the time now to open a new account on TikTok. So <laughs> I hope this webinar will be useful for you. Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, Can yes, just bring yes. the slides back up on screen, Laura, please. Okay, perfect. So yeah. there is a question from Marius. He's asking how can he des deactivate the subtitles? And maybe this is useful for everybody. If you want to de deactivate the subtitles, you have to press on closed caption CC and uh, uh, you have to hide the subtitle. So I hope that this is gonna work for everybody. So the ones that you don't want to have the subtitles, please go to closed caption CC and press the hide subtitle. And I'm hand over again to Matt. Yeah, sure. So sorry about that, everyone. Just a technical glitch on my side. So um, he wants to ask you really, what are your key messages? So we've been very clear on, um, the 2021 Red Disease Day key messages, and these will be used throughout the communications campaign. And uh, these have been agreed by the national alliances, and we've had some discussion around them, and you will see them coming out through the materials that we're developing. And the key messages are, rare is many, rare is strong, and rare is proud. And then sitting behind that, we've got um, a call to action, which is show your colors. And we've already heard about the, uh, the lighting of buildings activity that we're doing. And we support all of this activity with Rare Disease Day hashtag. So that's reinforced through our communications. Um, and then, so what I want to hear, or what I want you to hear, think about is just moving on to the next slide, Laura. Is you really need to think about what are your key messages going to be? So before, I would say before you actually start anything to do with using the digital communications tools, you really need to identify what your key messages are and uh, think about who your audiences are. And then once you've agreed those, is the time to start using digital communications tools. Okay, next slide. So that is a race through um, a number of things. And uh, apologies for the technical issues there. Um, what we've covered, um, digital communications are part of your toolkit. So we've spoken about uh, the other areas of communications that you need to consider, but also that uh, we will be offering you a range of tools and support materials. Uh, be clear on your timeline and your goals. So that's very much around understanding what you want to communicate and when you want to do it. So your audience, your messages, your objectives. Identify your audience and make sure that the messaging is tailored to them. Um, be really clear on who that audience is, is. Spend a bit of time working that out. Keep it as simple as you can. Uh, use the most efficient tools. So it might be Twitter, it might be TikTok, it might not be Twitter, it might not be TikTok. Just think about what your audience uses. Um, not everyone uses Facebook, uh, not everybody uses Twitter. So just think about, based on your audience, what they're most likely to use. Um, and then finally, and we've, we've not really gone through this, but limited funds, digital tools um, can be key. Um, a lot of them are free to access. Uh, a lot of them are super efficient. A lot of them give you the ability to measure. And um, yeah, so choose your tool wisely. Um, get your stakeholders involved. I don't know if you can see the rest of this slide, uh, but make sure that you get your stakeholders involved. There it is, um, because they can help you promote. They will have um, followings on social media as well. So use them and then keep measuring. So keep looking at your data and your analytics, which we haven't gone into, we haven't had time, um, to see if what you're doing is the right thing. Um, okay, so. We're going to go into the impact of digital communications. And we've got three fantastic case studies coming up now. And we've got um, Bianca, David, and Christine. And I think we're going to hear, uh, first of all, about how and why uh, from Bianca 
um, how and why in Germany. Um, they've used uh, video and photography to um, drive their social media campaigns and it, it should be a really great update from Bianca. So over to you, Bianca. Hello, yeah, well, I can feel some weight on my shoulders now and I hope to meet some expectations, but thank you, Matt, for introducing me and thank you for your great presentation. Um, there's a lot of theory that every press um, officer should know and knows, but you know, there's a huge gap between theory and practice. So um, hello, everyone from me from Berlin. I'm very, very excited. I'm not supposed to say I'm nervous, but I'm excited to uh, present our, yeah, our social media campaign and to give a little insight into our campaigning in Germany. And um, I would like to share my screen now. I should not forget that. I will do that right now, um, <laughs> like we've learned everybody. So this is now um, Tag der seltenen Erkrankung, which is the German translation into or the German translation of the word um, rare disease day. And you can see um, what we've been doing um, to just let you know where we started from um, to also have a better understanding of our social media campaigning. Um, uh, the heart and focus of our rare disease day always used to be um, the um, the local events and in that slide you can see pictures with people on the streets and uh, using lots of red balloons and um, while well, we started we were one of the first uh, countries as well to be part of the rare disease day community and we started with nine events in nine cities in uh, 2007 and came up to 35 events in 2017 uh, we implemented the red balloons as a um, as the symbol of the rare disease community, not so much the actual logo of the rare disease day. And uh, while well, we were supporting the local groups, of course, with all kinds of material, also using the Eurotis material, but translating that into German, the um, posters um, and doing all kinds of background um, information, material, press releases, whatever. And we used Facebook at that time only complementary we only had the Facebook channel until 2017, doesn't matter. And uh, we used it only to, yeah, to advertise some events. And like Matt said, uh, there are tons of ways of communication and you always um, yeah, have to meet your peer group or um, yeah, have to, to meet your objectives as well. And um, social media, and using the social media campaign within the rare disease campaign is only a part of the whole rare disease day campaign in Germany, of course. And um, well, um, we still, even with a huge cut of the show your rare campaign, we still had the four pillars of action to carry out our rare disease day, our attack der seltenen Erkrankung. We simply use different action to um, for our different groups like the press and media action, um, the supporting and pushing the local events still with our material and translating that still. And we shared, of course, the international campaign and the international material, but we also prepared our own social media campaign for the first time and uh, using the material of the Eurotis, but um, trying to um, adapt that to our own needs or to the needs of the of the peer group that we wanted to reach actually with the social media and um, well we wanted to become first what were the objectives in 2018 with the show you rare um, we wanted to become a visual part of the international community first of all also you know by using the hashtag and uh, using the symbol using uh, the logo and the colors and being part of that campaign. And we also wanted to show our German network of patients and our other supporters that there is a, an international communi community and then there are people coming together internationally and being that huge, strong uh, community. And we would just wanted to be part of that and show that as well. And um, well, we, with 
the videos and the photos. I'm saying more to that after. We especially wanted to um, to um, to activate people that are affected and are not in our members yet. Um, so we try to reach. Um, Yes, people have been with rare diseases, but the ones that were not part of our network yet. So to just get out of our little box and um, to, to make it a wider group, to be stronger, actually. Um, so we wanted to, um, we wanted patients, caretakers, doctors to send us video statements where they would actually state their commitment. And to receive the results, we did our own videos, giving more serious statements. Uh, you can see that in, in that little screenshot, actually. Um, and we, um, well, the content used to be like um, saying, I'm, I'm a caretaker, I'm doing this. And um, this is why it's so important to support people with rare diseases. So please do support people with rare diseases as well. And um, we also did some fun videos and some fun, yeah, videos and photos to actually um, advertise our whole campaign. And I would like to share one video. We thought it was funny at that time, but you know, it's always trial on error. So I hope this is going to work now. This is very German probably, or very Berlin. Like um, you don't have to hear it. You can only see it. So, like I said, it's advertising the Rare Disease Day 2018, show your rare. So, Berlin Metro, some of you might know. Bianca, we, we can't see the video. I'm not if, I, I don't know if we are supposed to be. Ah, you, you might need see to, the video. You might need to stop sharing and then. Damn. You're a different okay, screen. I'm very sorry. I'm a, uh, okay. Um, yes, I will. No worries. It, it'll do that work. as well. And I'm going back now. And now I'm and sharing the video. Now we see it. Yeah, we see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I couldn't. Yeah, like I said, it's a Berlin tube. And this is what we shared on Facebook and So um, I think you get the message. Like like I said, we only try to um, well to bring bring up a little bit more fun into that whole social media campaign. Apart from all the serious statements and all the serious message that we of course had, how did we reach people actually? Um, well, according to the fact that we only had a few followers uh, on Facebook at that time, I think around. 3,500 and uh, they were mostly our own network and we probably know, I think each one of them. Um, we, um, we did write a lot of emails and we did talk to a lot of possible multipliers. Um, so, and we, like it says here in um, this um, the headline, social media hand in hand with real life action. So we of course didn't Stop to 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 do big events. For example, we had a protest group gathering with our Berlin patients on the Berlin Alexanderplatz, and um, we animated all kinds of um, passengers to just take part in our little photo session and our little coloring sessions. And it was quite surprising how. Uh, much Germans it did actually like the face painting. I know in this, <laughs> I know internationally wide it wasn't so well. Um, um, well, you, you didn't like that so much, I've heard, but uh, we liked it actually very much. Um, it's yeah, it used to be simply a great team event, uh, bringing people together and actually building up that community and having some more and some new supporters who would also work as multipliers who also learned something about rare disease day and shared the picture themselves on Facebook or on whatever social media channel they would use. Um, so the results, I'm, I'm quite open here actually, um, what results did we have? Um, 
I think, yeah, for us at that time, um, we've, well, we, we thought it was a success to reach 8,000 people with, that's what Facebook said, 8,000 people with one video actually on, you know, it, it's only one video, but we did like 15 videos, for example. And we did reach 2,000 people uh, every day around, uh, you know, you can see um, um, uh, from, from, from February 1st to end of March. So um, I think, um, I mean, we didn't receive as many video statements as we wanted, but we received lots of photographs, uh, pictures from people who sent them to us and sharing their story as well. And we only presumed that it's because um, we only started in January. You know, the, the, the whole, I think the whole show, show Your Rare campaign only came up at the end of January. I don't remember that as well or that well. And we just, you know, we, we started quite late, I thought, to build up that idea in our head and to just make it that campaign. So um, we were much smarter in 2019 um, because we already knew in spring of 2018 what the campaign actually will be, that we still will have the colors and that we will have the show you rare hashtag and that we want to really meet um, our supporters and that we want to really raise awareness amongst people who are not part of our network yet. So we started in summer to build our ideas. And um, um, well, we, I mean, we had a good basis and um, we selected the possible message already. We selected influencers and famous people as well, like actors we knew or we didn't know so well, um, but were connected to our topic. Um, we selected doctors and patients that we've known that would like to um, prepare a video together with us um, before the rare disease day. And we contacted them uh, via email and we contacted them, you know, we contacted them personally. We used Facebook Messenger, we used comments, we wrote messages and on all kinds of channels. And we prepared also an explanation video, which is that one. Uh, for our website and also Facebook to tell people exactly what we want, what the message will be, and what they are supposed to do. That sounds a bit strange now, but it's you know it's um, it, it, it was quite simple and easy. And I think we also well we 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 just had some fun and we tried to also represent the fact that you know, that we have fun. So we hope that the kind of, like, like you said, that, that, the, that the spark would jump over. And we um, made a whole package. Um, also, we put in uh, scripts, possible scripts for the videos that we wanted from people because we wanted statements of people telling us um, what it feels like living with their rare disease, what are the challenges, for example. And we wanted doctors to, or caretakers to tell us why it's so, so important to support people living with a rare disease. And we did those scripts. We actually did a little how to, um, um, how to make a video with your mobile. And we put lots of uh, background information and the logo and, well, lots of ideas also um, into that package. And we sent out everything in October already. And um, well, uh, the aim was to get at least one video or um, photo statement back um, for uh, to share each day in February. And um, well, um, to make sure that we will have lots of content, of course, we still use all our workshops and events, upcoming events in January and February to, to, to talk to people, to, to look for multipliers, to, um, yeah, to, to talk about the rare disease day and to animate people to um, put color in, your, in their faces and to be just part of that whole community. And it worked quite well. I mean, we, you have all kinds of different people, patients, um, industry, doctors, 
who are actually a band. Um, this is a, um, um, yeah, this is um, a company. So um, yeah, and we still, that time in February, we still, or in January even, people started to send us lots of pictures. I mean, we didn't only want to share the pictures from, from other channels, we did that too as well, the whole time we commented, we thanked, but we also received really lots of lots of pictures stories, statements, and we had lots of material to share at the end, and we were happy, I must say. And um, I don't know what the time is. Unfortunately, I didn't put my Lara. Am I? Yes, it's about time. You can, yes, you can close up. I can Absolutely. close up. Yeah, yes. so I don't really want to talk about the 2020 campaign because uh, we, we, we are getting better now and better. We're also using Instagram. We're also using, trying to use Twitter and we're also uh, trying out lots of things. We're still um, going on events and um, animating people to be part, but I know this is going to be hard in 2021. So um, what I can only say to finish up, I mean, you've heard lots of things from Matt already, and uh, <laughs> this is all probably to underline with, with red, but um, by all the strategies you should have and uh, ideas you should have and, and well, what, what could be the last recommendation to have fun, to show people that it's also fun to be part of the rare disease day and the rare disease day community or uh, in general that you're strong and rare and uh, whatever you feel you are and um, well to think of a very clear and simple call to action it's always important to tell people what you want them to do and of course check beforehand who will be able to support you because I must say we are not a social media team we don't have budget to advertise um, so try to find people who will support you during that time in January, February, who actually can take over your account or who can share the account with you. So you can, well, take the burden from one shoulder and uh, divide that or, or share that with many shoulders. And that's my, I think, most important uh, recommendation on that day. And uh, apart from that, I'm also very happy to, to do this at the end and to do that at the end. And um, well, I hope um, I can, well, you have great ideas for 2021 that you will share with me <laughs> and the others. Thank you, That's Bianca. Thank you very much. I think that was sort of, that, that is an, an excellent presentation about, um, which covered a, a huge amount of things around um, how you can learn from and improve from one campaign in 2018 and use that information that you've developed to inform your 2019 approach. Um, how you can, you know, starting off from a relatively low platform of 3,500 followers on Facebook. Actually, for some of you watching this, 3,500 might seem miles away from where you are at the moment. Um, but they've grown, doubled their audience in a year or so. Um, they're also talking around, I think you'll hear more about that around growing your audience. Um, and also just understanding about how you can do these things with relatively low or even little cost. Um, there's a lot of things that Bianca's talked about there that I imagine have been uh, with no budget. And they're uh, getting people on board and getting fun things happening and enthusiasm moving. Um, are really vital for social media. Uh, it doesn't always have to be um, boring corporate information. So try and keep it fun. Um, next up, uh, we have got, so thanks Bianca. Next up, we've got um, David uh, or Toto, um, and he's gonna be talking to us from Mexico and uh, talking about the challenges, uh, challenging rare disease stigma in Mexico and how he's done that using social media and influencers. And I know there's been comments about influencers um, on Rare Disease Day, so let's hear from Toto. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Bianca. Great ideas, both of you. I would like to share with you a little bit of uh, the background of FEMEXER. FEMEXER means Mexican Federation for Rare Diseases. So next one, please. How to create effective digital communication. Uh, Bianca told us a, a great key problem for all of us, and I know we all have those. We don't have any budget. We don't. And it's really difficult for us to, to 
getting that audience without any budget. But if we use, like, like Matt said, uh, a great tool like Canvas, that Canvas is uh, really cheap or sometimes it's, it's free, Facebook, and you will, you will, you will get into those, uh, uh, into those people, into those targets. Already, we already have in Femexer uh, Facebook 13,000 followers but it's a work that we've been doing for seven years. So be patient, they will come, don't worry. Okay, next. Well, I'm Carlos, I'm most known as uh, Toto. I'm a spokesman for Gosha disease. I, I have Gosha disease and I'm head of social network in Femexer. Next one. Um, Femexer has been an umbrella organization for more than 70, other ONGs uh, for rare diseases. And we develop the strategies to fulfill patient treatments. Also, we help uh, families with a rare disease with a psychological uh, treatment for those who need it. Uh, the next one, please. These are some of our uh, ONGs, Mexican ONGs. As you can see in the right in the center is Femexer. Next one. And we all know COVID-19 COVID has been a very difficult uh, trouble, uh, problem issue for all of us. Uh, the campaign for 2020 has been, we don't know. We, 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 we just, we only could do it on, on social network and they are great tools. Uh, TikTok is, is getting really, really big. So bear in mind, uh, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, we haven't stopped our efforts for those who are uh, waiting for the treatments. And since seven years, we develop infographics, daily infographics. We already have over 400 infographics for every day. I know uh, Goju disease is uh, October the 2nd. So we, we make a little infographic and that way we uh, encourage patients and family patients to, to, to share with us. Okay, so I have Goshe and I'm proud. I, I will share this on Twitter and Facebook and that has helped us a lot. Also, we encourage uh, patients and, and, and family patients to register on the first and only natural, na national registry for rare diseases in Mexico. This is very, very important for, for families and for all government to, to know because sometimes we hear on the 28th of, of on, on our rare disease day, okay, so rare diseases are huge, are important, but they end on the, on the February 28th March 1st, it's, it's gone. So embrace it. We have to embrace all our rare diseases. Next one, please. These are some of our infographics and posters. We, uh, like I told you, we have over 400 uh, infographics. Canva is a great tool if you don't have any budget for, for uh, digital design. So you can share it with with Canvas. Next one, please. Uh, over these troubled times, we also held weekly Zoom meetings, not only with patients, because patients, we know I am a patient. I have all my, my fellow brother patients and sisters, but we have to bear in mind the, the, the view from our physicians, from our senators, from deputies, from our parents, from our siblings. And that has been a really great uh, a strategy for people in general to know rare diseases and to understand them a little bit, uh, a bit more. Okay, next one, please. This has been a little bit of, of this Zoom interviews. We have them all, all uh, all Fridays since four or five months ago. And this has been a very great tool to expand rare diseases in Mexico. Next one, please. 
we also have don't remember that youtube channel is free so <laughs> make a lot of videos bianca has shown us that a little video with 10 15 seconds is really good uh, don't stop making videos because they can share really good and they can uh, people can understand better when they don't want to go to their to their treatments or with their physicians this is a really good uh, tool next one please and let me share with you guys something that happens a lot in mexico and in latin america the word rare disease sometimes it can be translated as weird disease so physicians parents uh, uh, our government are is trying to change the word rare disease to 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 uh, orphan drugs or any other so we on 2021 we are the uh, the stigmatizing rare as, as the word, and we are making a huge campaign. The next one, please. With uh, stand up comedians, not only from Mexico, but also from Latin America, from Spain, we hopefully. Uh, as the, and we are develop a video to de stigmatize people with rare diseases in a friendly and fun way. That way, we hope rare diseases will be acknowledged and, and, and embraced in all our society. So next one, please. What are we doing already? We're having many virtual uh, meetings and interview all around Latin America. And we hope, well, also with, with Europe, with Asia, and we hope we can uh, work together in, in, in rare diseases. Next one, please. And that would be all. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, thanks, Tizzo. So, I mean, you've given us some some really um, good things to think about. And one of the, the areas that you've mentioned there is um, using weekly Zoom meetings. So for some people, that might just be seen as the day-to-day -day activity of the organization. But actually, you can harness um, that activity and use that as part of your digital communications approach as well. Um, and you can use social media and Twitter to to promote the things that are being discussed during those sessions. Uh, you also spoke about, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase what you said, uh, but build it and they will come. So don't be too concerned if you're starting off with a very um, low level of followers. It will take a bit of time to build up that momentum, but once you get momentum, uh, more and more people will get involved. And that we're talking about your influencers and your partners and the people that you're tagging in your social media activity. And then the last point that you made uh, just around um, YouTube and how a small 15 second video uh, can make a huge difference. And again, just think about what your audience needs, what their challenges are and how you can help them um, solve that problem. Okay, um, thanks very much, Toto, that was brilliant. And I enjoyed the uh, Mexican style slides as well. So. Good use of color on that. Um, we're going to go over to Christine in Kenya, and uh, Christine's going to talk to us um, about the work that she's been doing. So, uh, originally, they started off um, raising awareness, and that was targeted at patients and care caregivers about Rare Disease Day. Uh, then, you know, as the campaigns developed over a few years, uh, they've started to ta target policymakers uh, to take action. Um, so let's find out why digital tools um, are a good place to do that. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Matt. And um, you'll forgive me, I might have some background noise. Okay, um, let me share my screen. Rare Disease Day, the Kenyan Perspective. So from Rare Disease Day, we, there's a, we came up with the idea that we needed to be an organization, not just a group of people coming together 
so we could share and have more. If you're targeting policymakers, we cannot go in as individuals. So we formed Rare Disorders Kenya, which is a patient-led organization that creates awareness and advocates for rare diseases in Kenya. Rare diseases in Kenya, Rare Disease Day in Kenya, we first held our first day on, on 2014. And I remember I came across a poster for Rare Disease Day in January, only to realize that the day is in February. So we had little time to just go ahead and create something, but we still did it. So that's, that's the point. As much as you don't look like you don't have time, you can always do something. Even if you create awareness with one more extra person, that's, that's enough. Our patient targets, our target audience for 2014 was patients and their caregivers. And as each Rare Disease Day comes, we've moved from caregivers to policy makers, decision makers, doctors, people who will make a difference in our rare disease community. In 2020, we successfully partnered with the Ministry of Health they finally came to our event, made promises, but thanks to COVID, we haven't been able to follow up that much, but at least we know that we have made a mark in the, in the Ministry of Health. Social media has been a huge channel because it, it reaches everyone and anyone. And if you have the right channels, you can get, like for example, Twitter, let me pick Twitter as a platform. You can get it retweeted by influencers, by people who understand your cause and it reaches a wider audience. So for us, social media has been a huge, huge enabler of our campaign. Rare Disorders Kenya was born in 2018 out of these events, as I said earlier, where we thought it should be best to be an organization that is formally recognized by the government. Then we go ahead and um, address the government and other stakeholders as a body, not as a group of individuals or parents or patients. And from there, we have roughly 40 different conditions that we represent that we've heard about that are in our network, which I think is awesome, coming from three, from 2014. Um, our is for Rare Disorders Kenya is to raise awareness on the rare diseases in our country, to improve the lives of people living with rare diseases, work with national government and other stakeholders and improve data collection. We do not have a definition for what a rare disease is in Kenya. So, and for that, for us to do that, we need a registry. And so we have to improve data collection so that we can get a disease registry so that we can get a definition of what a rare disease is, is in Kenya. And so we don't have to follow what is what you guys have in your, in your databases. The challenges we've had from 2014 was this was an uncharted territory. We didn't know how to go about it. We, this was the first time, as I said, we only had two months before the D-Day and we had to create some awareness before that. We had financial constraints such that this was, we were all patients or caregivers. So we did not have money to put into the campaign. And most of what has been done from 2014 to 2017 has been out of pocket with, with um, friends of rare disorders Kenya coming in to provide us with things like venue, food, but the whole campaign leading to the day has been out of pocket. Patients' privacy and advocacy, I think we all know that, whereby you want to share your story to give it a meaning but again, you need to protect the person who is affected by the rare disease. So there was that balance between how much do we tell or how much do we give out and protect as well to the patient. And then access to policy and decision makers in the health industry, there was a stigmatization that the doctor knows everything and you coming in as a patient, as an expert in your own field, in your own disease, you had to like push and shove your way through that stigmatization to, to tell them, you know what, you might have the degree, yes, but we are the experts in our individual diseases and we know more. So we needed to break that barrier so we could go ahead and create more awareness for the people coming in behind us. Social media tools, oh, that's me. Social media tools, we have um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all with the same handle. And I think that uniformity is very key because it makes it easier for 
people to move across platforms and they still get you rather than looking for you and wondering which what is their handle in this platform and why is it different from the other platform then ease of access to high ranking people such that if i know your twitter if i can get to let me let me pick the ceo of eurodis i can tweet him and say hi and tell him this is what i think we need to do you see i have passed a lot of loops and hurdles to get to him but on social media it's very easy because it's a direct link and then sharing of information globally it's, a, it's so easy because you just share click you, you click and share and disseminate throughout all platforms and everyone will receive the information at um real time where are we now we are now fighting for the rights of people living with rare diseases. We've been recognized by some mainstream media houses as a go-to people when it comes to rare diseases. We've partnered with local stakeholders in the community, and we've also partnered with international partners with, um, for example, we have RDI, we have CMTC, we have a few organizations that we're still connecting with to share information and to share patient relevance information across continents. And, um, these are some of the pictures we've done from 2019, 2020, just creating awareness and having fun. In 2019, we realized that we had had too much um, public focus rare disease day. We actually took a step back and went, that's a picture on the top right, yes. We went and had um, barbecue meat, we call it Nyamachoma. We went and had barbecue meat at some out of town area. We had fun, we bonded as patients and caregivers and, remem and reminded ourselves as to why we are doing this. Because you can easily forget what is driving you if you focus on other um, objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Matthew. Okay, thanks, Christine. That, 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 that's really um, some great ideas in there. And I think it's really useful that you've spoken around the, the kind of challenges that you faced um, in 2014 that you were in this uncharted territory and uh, with financial constraints and inexperienced um and then you've spoken around how you've overcome that and some of the activities that you've done um some people you know may really um understand what it's like to be in uncharted territory some people are, are at the start of this journey um and that's what we're here to support with and again we'll be giving some tools and some tips in a document after this uh, webinar um, i think the other points that you make around uh, uniformity and consistency being key um in the naming of the different channels that you're using but also in the communications as well um, so you have to keep reinforcing the messages um, some of the benefits of social media are the ease of access that you have to um, key leaders um, and partners and sponsors um, in organizations around the world and also that you can publish stuff globally instantly um, i think one of the other things that i learned a few years ago was a lot of the time we were previously focused on publishing things through press releases and a press release is always going through an intermediary so it's interpreted by a journalist and they take out what they want to say mm -hmm. and um, that doesn't necessarily always get the right message across so social media um, allows us to go direct to the consumer direct to the audience um, that has a lot of benefits. It also has some drawbacks, as we're seeing in the uh, political environment at the moment. But let's not go into that. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I think we have summed up the session. So I'll just you know just summarise what we've heard from Bianca. We heard talking around um, making the videos fun. Um, be very be as visual as you can be. And again, think about it's not always um, German or English um are not always going to be the first language of your audience so using using visual um can work a lot of the time um learn and improve um so look at what people are doing with your content with your materials and um, think outside the box so be creative be fun um 
Toto spoke about um, different communications tools that we hadn't spoken about. So how you can use um, team meetings in Zoom as digital comms. Um, he spoke about building it and they will come. Uh, so starting off from a low point, but then people will get involved. And that's about tagging and hashtags. Um, use video um, it can make a huge difference. And then Christine, just to reinforce, um, consistency is key. And um, social media really is, um, once you've got the hang of it, it's a really easy set of tools that help you communicate with people at, at all levels, all around the world. Um, I think that's it. So back over to Laura and Eric. Thank you very much, Matt. And thank you, Bianca, Christine, and Toto for your speaking. Now we're going to open up to um, questions and answers. We've got um, a bit of time. We've got lots of questions coming in um, from uh, the audience. So um, if we can all be up on the screen. And Eric, are you ready to work with me to ask these questions? Yes. OK, great. So. Um, maybe a first question, um, I'll um, maybe put this to uh, Toto. So a question is coming in from uh, an anonymous attendee is asking, what is the best way to identify and approach influencers to amplify your message? Sometimes you only have to look for them on their Twitter, their Instagram, sometimes. I know uh, influencers, <laughs> they're that influencers and sometimes they can be a bit hard to achieve, but on their Twitter or sometimes on their Instagram have their email to, to not their direct email, but their manager email. And if you share with them all the work that you've been doing, at least that's what we've, what we've been doing sometimes they, they, they answer. Sometimes they, did, they, they don't. So you have to send a lot of messages and one, just, just having one, it will open a lot of doors. You have to send a lot of emails. It's not okay. written on here, but I have a question for you, Toto, as well relating to, to this topic. Uh, do you contact uh, people directly or do you contact them through an agency? What do you usually do? We contact them directly, but from Femexer, directly to them, not from my, my, my personal account. Because Femexer already with their 13,000 followers and Femexer is really, is very known uh, in Mexico because all the work that we've been doing through all the all the years, the seven years, and before that, we developed the ONG for for my disease, for me and my sister's disease, which is uh, pide un deseo, and we've been working since 23, 24 years ago. So we have a lot of moral uh, work. Okay, thank you. So next question well uh, Bianca wanted to add something on this is it okay if I might add something please, please. Sure. yes yes okay because with the influencers I mean um, uh, Carlos um, uh, seems to be very uh, fond and already known some influencers uh, usually you don't or you might not know them and we did um, look for hashtags uh, in the search field and we also divided beforehand um, our influencers into groups. What influencers did we want to have? Because there could be the actor who will, who's not related to diseases um, and who's not affected, but who can still be interesting to share a message, especially around Rare Disease Day, which, will, which could be interesting for this person to support. Um, this campaign and then you have the related persons like a patient who had who might have 12,000 followers on Instagram which is much more than we have so this person will already be an influencer for us as well and we detected those and made a long list and just contacted them like like uh, Carlos said or Toto said um, we just contacted them via um, um, messenger uh, comments, writing emails, uh, trying to find telephone numbers. And uh, well, 
uh, just um, getting on their nerves a bit, but also having an interesting content to, to, to make them interested in us. Great. And can I add something? Please. Yes, please. Don't be afraid of talking with influencers. They're only influencers. They're a person just like yeah. you. You have to send a lot of emails, a lot of messengers, but if one uh, take your message, it's, it's okay. Don't worry, they're not any different than us. And a lot of people, we know there's over 7,000 uh, different rare diseases around the world. We all have a, a sibling, a parent, a, mm -hmm. so they can relate. They can relate and they will help. Some of them, one, two, three, will help. Okay, great. I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, so there are lots, a couple questions in there that are talking about translating materials. Does anyone want to, want to take that up when you're speaking on social media? What do you translate? What do you keep in English? Okay. How do you so decide that? Sure, um, go ahead. We, we always um, uh, also trans, we, we translate the whole title. Um, we, because we always use a different topic, you know, we, we don't, our German audience doesn't really get along with the rare as proud, for example. So we have rare as many um, for the first time we're using one and only translating it, but we also, we always translate the title and the topic into German. And over the last years, we also translated rare disease day into Tag der seltenen Erkrankungen, but from with um, what well, starting with the show your rare campaign, we started to implement um, step by step by step the hashtag, um, the English uh, hashtag show your rare. And last year, uh, last campaign in 2020, we only used um, the English hashtag, but we still, of course, have our German content, our German message, and we only do German posts, but we also share the English posts. So. I mean, it's a different audience in, in social media. Yeah. Does the, by sharing the English post with the German post sometimes might, which is another one of the questions is how to go from national and show that it's also an international campaign. So uh, maybe that helps uh, give a global feel. Carlos, uh, Toto, did you want to say something about that? No, no, no. Uh, okay. Also, also yeah. that we, we translated to, to Spanish, but we also have the redices with the hands. And it, like you said, it, mm -hmm. it gives the, the scent of an um, international message. Okay, and Christine, just, do you, sorry, oh, go sorry. ahead, please, sorry. please Matt. Yeah, I was just gonna say that the, uh, some of the uh, materials for the global campaign will be available in multiple languages. So keep an eye out for those when they're published online. Okay, and Christine, do you um, post in multiple languages? No. No, we don't. We mostly do it in English for now. Okay. Okay, great. Um, Yanka, so, it was yes, really yes. nice that you answered this question with the translated materials behind you. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I have another question. This one maybe is for Lara, because there is Cedric asking, how might pharmaceutical companies that are involved in the production and development of orphan drugs be involved in the Rare Disease Day? Um, so yes, anyone can participate in Rare Disease Day. So uh, today we're talking a lot about the patient organizations and how they can organize uh, themselves. But um, for sure, um, the materials are available. Um, the rule for using the materials is that we ask that it not be used for commercial purposes. We ask that pharmaceutical companies, you know, um, here online you have already three um, patient organizations contact a local patient organization or a patient organization and groups um, with the diseases um, that your company um, uh, is working with and ask them what, what support do you need? What are you doing for Rare Disease Day? Um, what are the events you're holding and how can we support you? So contact uh, patient organizations um, locally or internationally or in your disease. Second thing you can do is to go on uh, rarediseaseday.org and become a friend of Rare Disease Day. Tell us who you are. Talk about how you're raising awareness either internally um, in your company 
or what how you're working with patient organizations. So um, talk about it and use um, raredisease.org. Is that a good, Eric? Great, yes, okay. great. <laughs> We have also a question from Alice, who is asking if you have a website for your organization and if you feel like your efforts have made a difference and how. So can okay. maybe Carlos, uh, Toto start, then Bianca and then Christine? Yes, okay. of course. Good. Um, well, if you can look for us, you, you can share with us Sorry, you can look for us in femexer.org. Uh, also in Facebook, in Twitter, it's the same, femexer, F-E-M-E-X-E-R. And how do we measure our work? Fortunately, we, at least lysosomal diseases in Mexico until 1990, 1990s, 93, there were no treatment for lysosomal diseases like, like mine, like Gaucher, Pompe, Fabri, MPS. And we already saved around 500 uh, little, little lives. So it's been a great work. And then we uh, developed Femexer and we've helped a lot of patients. Like I told you, there's over, over 7,000 different rare diseases and we try to help all of them in Mexico currently there's only treatment for around 60 or 70 uh, diseases but for those that don't have treatment we help them with their psychological help and we try to to uh, I don't know the word in, in English orientar uh, uh, to inform, yes, inform. and, and mm -hmm. to inform and, and try to uh, try to get their treatment. When there's treatment, there's a lot of new policies that we change. We work along along with our representatives. We change we change some some laws, so that's been a great work. And we definitely have changed the health the, the health uh, in Mexico. Okay, thank you, David. Maybe we'll move to um, Christine and you can tell us your website and mm, how your efforts uh, have made change. Okay, We've, our website is www.rareDiseaseKenya.org, but it's more or less like an informative website. We mostly communicate through the social media and like through Twitter and Facebook and have those items posted on the website. So website is more or less just for contact information and just the basic information. But when it comes to disseminating awareness, you mostly use the social media platforms. Great, and Bianca? Well, uh, our website is quite full and uh, trying to meet all of our audience. We have like politicians, we try to inform press, we uh, try to inform uh, patients and patient groups who try to find us and doctors and so on. So it's quite full. Um, I'm writing down the address if you want to uh, take a look. Um, yes, but apart from that, um, do, can we measure? You mean after Rare Disease Day? Yes, we always have more people um, connecting to our website, looking for something, especially for consultation, because so we also have a consultating or consultational consult team who's consulting um, patients and uh, doctors. Um, so people are looking for help. Those are the ones going on our website and, of course, press. Fortunately, 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 we have a lot of press and media uh, attention in Germany, so which is always great. And yes, um, also the social media accounts, like I said, it's getting better and better, but it could always be even better. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Can I just add to that, yes, Laura? Please. That just just to, to make a, a point that depending on the size of the organization and depending on your skills and your objectives and who your audience is, uh, you don't have to have a huge website. Um, your main approach might be to use social media. Um, your main approach might be to use Twitter. It might be to use Facebook. 
Uh, so don't think you have to have a huge website that has every single document you've ever worked on published on the, um, yeah, you can use other ways. Yes, so lots of different ways. Thank you, Matt. Um, there's a question for Christine, um, possibly She's asking, how do you target specifically low income families or in rural areas? Is that potentially or any of the someone's asking on social media how to um, target those rural areas? Um, I had answered on the, on the chat, but um, for us, that's a challenge we're having in the sense that um, those in the low income bracket, social media is not their priority. And so what we have learned so far is to use mainstream media that targets low income communities. For example, if it's a radio station that is in a local language, we find somebody within our group who can speak that local language and go address in that, in that radio station. If it's television, you know it's countrywide, so we try and probably speak Swahili. So at least those in the rural areas can understand because not everyone understands English. So for us so far, that is what we are doing, but it's a challenge that you're trying to figure out how to address. So that's a great um, link also to a future webinar that we're having about how to engage media. So using those main, that mainstream media is one of the answers to that. Thank you, Christine. Um, I'm gonna move to a uh, next question. So um, in your experience, this is from Salvatore. Um, in your experience, do you know any analytical tools to assess how um, good effect, how good and effective is your communication strategy, or how to reach the right targeted audience? I don't know, if, Matt. Do you have some ideas of analytical tools? Yeah, I mean, it's a, so there, there's two parts to that question. One is about about the audience, and the the other is about the analytics. So. Um, Really, uh, I don't know if there are any tools that can help you define your audience. Uh, there probably are some tools, but really I think what you need to think about is yourself before you use any kind of digital tool is who your target audience is. And that, that is your, your uh, base point to start. Regarding analytics, all of the social media tools have some sort of functionality that gives you uh, analytics. So there's Twitter analytics, Facebook analytics, LinkedIn analytics. Um, I'm sure Instagram has analytics as well. Uh, and there's also Google analytics, um, which will tell you um, all about your website performance. Now, all of those are free of charge. Um, they can be a little bit complicated to set up, uh, but they all really tell you um, where your visitors are coming from, um, how they're looking at your keywords, how they're using your um, different words that you've optimized for search functions and how they are moving around your website or moving around your social media page. So yes, spending a bit of time looking at the analytics and the data is really helpful. Um, I think we'll try and include some of those links I've mentioned in the, um, in the document we'll prepare. Um, but yeah, I hope that, I think that answers, hopefully. Yes, yes, well, thank you. Um, and again, um, Matt, you're emphasizing that free of charge. So all, so many tips today um, that you can do even starting small and um, with little cost or no cost. Okay, so we have a couple of questions, Eric, I'm just gonna keep going. So we have a couple of questions here, please, um, about um, uh, how to tailor content. Do you need to tailor content depending on which uh, social media platform you're, um, you're speaking on or you're using? And how do you do that? Who wants to take that one? So I can, I can, I can partially answer that. I mean, it's a, that's a fantastic question and it's a really complicated question. Um, one of the things that you have to consider is, um, is resource, okay, versus impact. So you have this thing called uh, standardization of your message versus adaptation of your message. So, um, the more standardized, so I'm just trying to think, in global marketing, so when you see advertising around the world, you see standardized adverts. Um, they will usually have a voiceover, um, the same 
video, the same video, and uh, the voiceover is translated um, into different languages, and that's standardized approach. Uh, or you will see a video that is designed for a local marketplace. So it has local actors appearing in the advert uh, using regional accents, and the message is very much tailored to those people. Uh, usually they have a bigger impact, but if you have to tailor it to every single country or every region, it's obviously going to take more resource or more money to make that happen. Now, the digital communications tools run in a similar way. So do you have a standard message for Twitter, a standard message for uh, LinkedIn, a standard message for Instagram? Uh, do you have a standard graphic for Instagram, a standard, message, a standard graphic for Twitter and for LinkedIn? The reason that's important is because they all have different ways of presenting the information. So if you standardize your approach, um, you will get probably less impact, but you will be able to appear on more channels. If you adapt it to every single channel, uh, you will get more impact, but it's going to take you a lot more time to adapt those tools. So really, um, what I'm saying is, either way, uh, you need to make a decision yourself. Um, they both have their benefits, they both have their negatives. Um, and really, you know, adapting is probably best, but um, you haven't got all of, all of the time in the world or all of the budgets in the world. If you have, then, then adapt away. I can see Bianca smiling, so I'm hoping she's got something to add to this. I can just, um, yeah, I can, can just not because we actually don't have standardized messages. Sometimes we do share what we shared on Instagram. We also share that uh, directly to Facebook to, to spare some time, but those messages never get any likes. They are not seen. So, you know, you, you all know that you have uh, trouble like an umbrella organization to, to even be seen by other people, yet, right? So. So we try the, um, um, the personal messages and we try the different content on Facebook and Instagram simply because we have different audiences on Facebook and Instagram as well. Not so much anymore, but um, Twitter is totally different. So that's why our Twitter channel right now is not working at all because simply we have no time to share anything on Twitter. So that's what's going to happen too. But I still recommend to use different audiences or to to speak with different messages and different content to the different audiences. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to this point and reinforcing what we've already said is think about who your audience are and think about what you're trying to do to do with them. And then you will be able to identify if you need to tailor um, or standardize or adapt your message. So it's to Toto, you wanted to add? Yes, also. Uh, I think you should know your audience. Twitter is at, at first very, very difficult. Facebook, uh, in, at least in Mexico and Latin America, is, is the most used uh, social network. Then it's uh, Instagram. And bear in mind TikTok, because TikTok is getting really, really huge. And there's, there's a lot of tools that you can use in TikTok that should not be dispatched. It's a really, really cool tool to, to get into those uh, young uh, target of, of a young, young, young person. Okay, so adapting um, messages and um, leading off of what Bianca mentioned, umbrella organization. So we have a question um, specifically um, as an umbrella organization, um, so meaning um, organizations who have members, how do you engage your member organizations in the campaign development and planning? You might want to take that. I know Bianca um, holds meetings with her members. Do you want to explain that? Oh, yeah, you've been part in one of these meetings as yes. well. Uh, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> via Skype at that time. Uh, we usually have little workshops once a year. I think now with uh, Zoom, sorry, my voice. <clears throat> now with uh, Zoom, we can do more um, group meetings and um, share ideas, ask people what they want and what their message is going to be. Sorry, my voice. Toto, no, no. take over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Toto, go ahead with your member organization. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. 
So with your member organizations, how do you, um, you showed some of the Zoom meetings you're doing weekly, and how do you get them um, engaged in, in, in your planning? Well, that has been a really great uh, strategy. They're, they're, they're asking us, they're, they're, they want to be on those Zoom because they're watching, there's a lot of patients, there's a lot of siblings, there's a lot of parents, and they want to share, they also want to share their experiences. So we're not looking for them, they're looking for us. Fortunately, they're looking for us. Um, it's been a great uh, strategy. I would recommend you to do that because that's a really cool way to see rare diseases, not only on the, on the, on the patient. Me as a patient, I would, I would tell you, well, this is like da 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 da, -da. But as my sibling, as my parent, as my nurse, as my physician, as the pharmaceutical, as the government, they all have very different point of views and they all should be shared and, and heard. Can I ask you, sorry, you were first, Christine. Okay, ask him because he's still... Okay, okay. Um, Toto, one question. How do you contact the different groups? Are these people um, uh, from your network um, or uh, is, are these open Zooms for everyone? How do you no, pronounce they're, them? Who's they're, all, they're all from our networks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so changing subjects completely with the next um, question. Um, we have a couple questions about um, any situation specific tips given the pandemic context. So with COVID-19, um, does anyone have any uh, tips coming up for 2021 specifically? So I think, I mean, one of the things that we've noticed um, and I noticed that was uh, mentioned in the chat um, is that a lot of the digital tools that some people have been using um, for quite a while now have become mainstream. Um, so things like webinars, a lot of people weren't doing that before and now everyone's doing it pretty much um, every day. Um, I think the only, I don't know if you have any specific COVID advice um, because the situation is changing daily and it's different for everyone around the world. Uh, but the one thing I would say is that the tools exist uh, and they are, there is a demand for people to use them. So start using them and uh, start communicating with people. That's all. And we have another question from Sarah Martins, who asks, she works in a laboratory for research and diagnosis of rare diseases. And she wants to know if any of the panelists have any tips on how to reach patients, uh, if there are no national or local rare disease patient organizations for rare disease day events. Yes, can you go ahead, Car Carlos? Toto. Well, in Mexico, as I already told you, there is only the Access Salud uh, National uh, Registry, which held a lot of uh, registry for, for, for patients. Um, but you can also look for them in every ONG. Yes. In Mexico, I, at yeah. least... Uh, I'm sorry, at least in Mexico, there's no there's no registry, and and I think in Latin America it's also a very difficult uh, problem, but we are working on on it since four or five years, so we already have a really huge uh, data. Yes, and um, I don't know if anyone else. Go ahead, Christine. Mm -hmm. Um, my thought would be for Sarah to actually organize the Rare Disease Day event and invite the patients in their database first, then physicians, doctors, other stakeholders, that way they could meet and pave the way forward. Because maybe people don't know there are other rare disease patients out there or should we have a patient-led rare disease organization? So if she could, if they could, create an event that brings everyone together into one room, then they discuss the way forward. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, so I, I would encourage her to um, contact patient organizations. And um, something I didn't mention earlier about for pharmaceutical um, companies or companies, um, you know, Rare Disease Day 
um, with this coordination and this global coordination that you're seeing today with um, speakers from three different continents. Um, this is a real patient-led awareness campaign. Use those messages that are coming from the patients. Um, if you are going to hold an event or you're going to communicate, use those messages. Contact local patient organizations. Find out what kind of messages they want to put out or they need to put out um, for people living with a rare disease and, and work with them. I really encourage um, this way of, of communicating. Okay, uh, Eric, do you have another question? Yes. So there is another uh, question from Marios, who is asking until what day can we do an event for Rare Disease Day and publish it on the Rare Disease website? Yes, so um, thank you for that question. And uh, you can go on Rare Disease Day um, and there is a um, form to fill out to talk about your uh, event. You can do that up until the last day um, for Rare Disease Day. We're very busy on the 20th and, and it's going to be uh, on a Saturday and Sunday this year, which is great. So um, please don't hesitate. And what we really like, which um, uh, we don't get often enough, is even after Rare Disease Day, please continue. Sh send us your photos, send us the videos, um, upload them on rarediseaseday.org for the world to see. It's just great to um, be able to make these collages of photos um, that we're able to share. And it brings um, inspiration and strength uh, to others around the world to see um, that it is a worldwide movement. So um, even after Rare Disease Day, don't hesitate uh, to put up uh, your event and to, to show us the pictures. Does anybody else want to add on that? We still have some questions. I think we have about seven minutes left. So yes, we can we can go ahead with more questions. There is Letty who is asking, uh, she says that uh, you have mentioned continuity across platforms and she wants to know if this means that tailoring content to a specific platform is not advised or if you would suggest adapting the same content to different platforms. She uses the example of TikTok. She says that TikTok, TikTok has videos, but Instagram is better suited to photos. Is it enough to maintain the same theme, but have differing formats? Maybe Matt can comment on this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's similar to the previous question that we answered in that um, you really need to think about your audience and uh, how they're going to interpret it. Obviously, TikTok has benefits. Um, but if you're targeting um, the elder community in the northwest of England, you might not get much take up. Um, so just think about your audience and then uh, tailor your messaging, your content to suit that audience. And we have a, a very last question from Rosalind. So she wants, she, she plan, she, the, her, her organization is planning to use automation in the future to plan campaigns ahead of time. But do you think that this is a good idea? Yes. yes. No plan, more to plan, add plan. on this. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's just that the, the, the point is that, so it's great to automate. Um, but you have to have a plan in place to allow you to automate. So um, get the plan right first and then um, worry about the, I think we, we said earlier on, we spoke about the different channels. Don't start off deciding what tools you want to use or what in automation techniques you want to use. Think first and foremost about your objectives, your audience and what you're asking them to do. And then decide what tools you want to use, be that automation or whatever else, TikTok only decide those different tools after you've decided what messages you want to give and what audiences you want to influence. So, okay. Yes, please, Toto. Just like Matt is saying, know your audience. I know, uh, just, to, just to add some, the last thing, uh, social network is very hard, but you have to try it. All of them, you have to try it. Um, the, I think, the only thing that will help 
in in all uh, social network is the the, the, the hands uh, painted painted hands uh, picture. I think that's the only one that you can share in all your your social network, and it will help you because it will help people see there's a lot of people on the back with, uh, I mean, supporting. I'm sorry, my, my, my English is a bit uh, rushed, but I think that's the only image that you can use in all of your networks that it will help you to, to, to awareness, to, to make awareness on where this is taking. Okay, well, thank you. I think we're gonna close on that thank you everyone um, for participating in our webinar today uh, thank you matt for your expert tips thank you bianca from germany for your inspiring and colorful photos and re reminding us to enjoy as we're planning and rushing to get the word out thank you um, toto for telling us about simple ways um, to be in contact with um, other patients with groups, but also um, with um, researchers, clinicians, and everyone. And Christine, thank you for showing us how you've, um, over the past six years, adapted uh, your campaign to what your, your needs and to your targets and, and trying to reach out to policymakers. Um, great, uh, great tips um, from Mexico, Germany, and Kenya. And I wish everyone uh, either a good night or a good day or a good evening. So thank you very much. And we'll see you on the 19th of November. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you.